Tuesday. I know. You promised to pay me Tuesday. I know. Six weeks behind in rent now. Well? I'll pay you on Saturday. You said that last week. All right, leave me alone. This time you'll get paid. I told you to leave me alone. Now get out of here. You haven't left your room in days. How do you expect to get the money sitting here? I'm not just sitting. I'm doing something. What are you doing? I'm thinking. If you thought less and did a little real work, like washing dishes in the restaurant across the street, you might earn a few dollars. A few dollars, a lot of good that'll do. Huh. You want to make a fortune all at once? Yes. Yes, that's what I want. I want a fortune all at once. I'll give it to Saturday. That's final. Lawrence Crane, a student. I was here a month ago. I remember quite well. Well, uh, here I am again for the same reason. Come 
Come in. You must understand, young man, that I'm not running a pawnbroker service. In the many years that I've been teaching at the university, students have come to me from time to time to, shall we say, alleviate their distress. Education must be encouraged, you know. Then again, in any business transaction, a certain profit must be made. That's why I charge a fee. That and to discourage young men from getting into debt too easily. Now, what have we now? Uh, I'd like to pawn this. But you haven't paid the interest on your last pledge. The month was up the day before yesterday. Well, I'll bring you the interest for another month. Wait a little longer. That's for me to do as I please, my good sir. To wait or to sell your pledge at once. How much will it give me for the watch? <laughs> you come with such trifles, it's hardly worth troubling. How much will it give me for it? Ten dollars. Ten dollars? It cost my father a hundred. Your father made a very injudicious investment. Ten dollars. All right. Ten minus two equals eight. What's the two for? Interest. In your case, I'm deducting it in advance. But I need that ten dollars. But I don't need your watch. Good night, Mr. Crane. Keeping yourself lately. I haven't been feeling so hot. Oh, Larry. What do you have? A bowl of soup. Got some nice lamb stew. Just a bowl of soup. Okay. You better eat something solid, Larry. I can lend you a buck. Thanks, Ben. I have money. You register for the fall term? I don't think I'll be here this fall. Are you crazy? This is our last year. You can't drop out now. They've discontinued all scholarships. Well, can't you get it from home? My mother makes just enough to keep herself going. Yeah. My old man had to slap another mortgage on the homestead to keep me here. There must be some way. That's what I keep telling myself. Give me the crackers, will you? How much do you need? Four hundred dollars, at least. What about those articles you've been writing? Well, I sent them in over a month ago. Haven't heard a word. Hmm. Well, something will turn up, Larry. You just keep punching. Hey, come on, fellas. Let's play pool. This is costing me money. Hey, Chuck. Yeah? How's chances using your microscope for a couple of days? Don't ask me. That's Professor Stanley. You mean that old miser's got his claws on you, too? Yeah, you're not kidding. Is there a man at Druton who hasn't been in his clutches at one time or another? 
They should change, Larry. Thanks. You know, someday I'd like to dissect Professor Stanley. I bet I'd make a new discovery for medical science. The only human being with an icebox for a heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hot tonight. I'm sizzling. They say Stanley's got a lot of money. Yeah, and he keeps it all on him. Doesn't trust banks. You know, someday someone's going to knock him off for his dough. Yeah, a guy like that is just asking for it. He's no more than a leech or a black beetle. <laughs> That'll be 60 cents, miss. Something? I, uh, I had a dollar left. I, I must have lost it. But I tell you, I did have a dollar left. Yeah, sure. That'll be 60 cents, miss. It's gone. I'll, um, I'll bring you the money tomorrow. Where do you work? Well, I, uh, I don't have a job yet. Then how do you expect to pay me tomorrow? I'll get it somewhere. Where? You'd better learn a new line. That one's older than you are. A man or a mouse? If you had an ounce of back on your march right in that office and say, Mr. Wilson, I've been looking at your ugly face for 15 years and I'm sick of it. I quit. Well, Don't see me if you listen to me in the first
Larry Crane. Oh. Larry Crane. I, I was here last night. What do you want? Uh, I brought something else for you. Come back tomorrow. Professor Stanley, I, I can't come back. Why not? Well, tomorrow will be too late. Cigarette case. Silver. It doesn't feel like silver. I'm sure it's silver. Why did you wrap it up? It was that way. I haven't used it in a long time. Whatever did you tie it up like this for? I'm sorry. I still say it doesn't feel like silver. It's too heavy. Why? Why, it's only glass. He told me he'd be in after 10. You want to wait? No, I'll see him in the morning. Hey, look, there's a light on the inside. Maybe he's falling asleep. Say, there's a key on the inside of the door. So what? Well, he must be home. Whenever he leaves, he locks the door from the outside. Then he's in there and won't open up. Well, why did he tell you to come? There must be something wrong. You think so? We better call the janitor. Well, other men was only half your brains, and that isn't saying much. You're pulling down twice that. If you weren't to despise jellyfish, what other? Don't honey me. I told you that a million times. Something wrong, I tell you. There'd better be getting me up in the middle of the night. It's not the middle of the night. It's only half past ten. Hey, if 
you boys are pulling my leg. I tell you, he's in there and won't open up. Maybe he don't want to see you. But we had an appointment. You're locking yourself in now. What are you hiding? It's not enough that you won't pay the rent. You've got to keep the place looking like a... My ashtray. You chipped a piece out of it. Let's go. Go where? Headquarters. The police? Well, uh... <laughs> what do they want with, uh, with me? I don't know. I was just sent to bring you in. Oh, who? The police? I might have known that's where you'd wind up. A fortune he was after, that's what he told me the other day. I'm going to come into a big fortune, he said, all at once. Shut up. Let's go, kid. Well. Oh, a letter for you. Aren't you going to put a coat on? Oh, sure. Sure. Captain Burke wants him. Yes? Lawrence Crane is here. Send him in. <coughs> Larry Crane? Yes. Sit down, Larry. Cigarette? Thanks. Ever see that before? No. Belonged to the late Professor Stanley. The late Professor Stanley? He was murdered on Wednesday, hadn't you heard? No, I haven't. Yesterday's papers were full of it. Yesterday's papers? Isn't today Thursday? No, it's Friday. Professor Stanley was murdered on Wednesday night. Where were you on Wednesday, Larry? Oh, I wasn't feeling so well. I, I went to bed early. Where were you yesterday? Well, I must have slept all through yesterday. I. I just woke up when your man came for me. I see. That explains a good deal. Explains what? It was in yesterday's papers for everyone who had found articles with Stanley to come and get them. You're the only one who didn't show up. Well, that's my watch. I know. It's got your name in it. Well, uh, I haven't any money to redeem it. Take it, it's yours. You see, Professor Stanley was not a licensed pawnbroker. We have a law in this state which forfeits all loans in such cases. Well, that's a good law. Just sign this receipt. Yes? Japer just brought in the medical examiner's report. What is the cause of death? Cerebral hemorrhage. I thought so. Tell them to go ahead with the dissection. Right. I'll be over there later. Yes, sir.
Bad news? No. No, it's great news. Can I go now? Sure, Larry. Take it easy. Thanks, Captain. Like a glove. Fits like a glove. It'll do. Uh, what about your old clothes? Give them away. Thank you. Miss? How about a little service? You. I started to work here yesterday. Bourbon Street. Did you uh, find that dollar you lost? I did lose a dollar. Honest. I'll pay you back at the end of the week. Forget it. What's your name? Eileen. Do you have uh, yesterday's uh, paper around? Yesterday's? Yes. Seems I uh, lost the day somewhere. Oh, uh, wait a minute, I'll take a look. Eileen. Yes? Oh, I was just uh, repeating your name to uh, hear how it sounds. Well, how does it sound? I like it. That makes season, so do I. There's his thing. Train wreck in Milwaukee. Fired Lacey's. Fight in the Latin Quarter. Oh, Mr. Schaefer. This is a surprise. What's a surprise? I always drop in here when I'm in the neighborhood. What brings you to the neighborhood today? The Stanley case. Sit down. What do you have? It's on me. Beer. What? Not another fire downtown. This is yesterday's paper. Oh. Here's a copy of today's. I'm through with it. I'm not interested in today's paper. No? What are you reading about? Why do you care what I'm reading about? I just asked. Why do you ask? Look, I don't give a hoot what you're reading. Well, I'll tell you anyway. I'm reading about the murder of Professor Stanley. Well? Well, what? Aren't you going to question me? When you picked me up in my room, I was wearing an old coat and pants that didn't even match. Now look at me. See those green backs? Thanks for the beer. Eileen, what are you doing tomorrow? Well, I hardly know you. All I'm asking for is a date. How about it? Maybe. Now you're stalling. That's no answer. Okay, it's a date. Eileen. You know something? What? You make the best sandwiches I ever ate. <laughs> My potato salad isn't bad either. Would you like some? No, no, not right now. Um, how about some wine? Oh, that would be wonderful. There. Funny how wine makes you think of sunny places. You know, when I was a little girl, I always dreamed of going to California. But somehow things never worked out. Things never do. They will for you, Larry. You know, you've got a doctor's hands. Larry, 
Let me read your palm. <laughs> well, I... Come on. Please. Okay, let's see now. Ooh, you have a long lifeline. And you've got an unbroken... It's an M. An M? See? The lines form a letter M. Now, what does that stand for? Medicine. That's it. You're going to be a famous doctor. Or... Money. You're going to make a great fortune. Uh. Medicine. Money. What else begins with M? I know. Come on, let's get out of here. I was only going to say marriage. Bring another beer, will you? Yeah, I don't know. Thanks a lot. She was out of the world. You know, the best thing I thought about was all the way. You're not the mom. You're the mom. Are you kidding me? This chick is starting to get on my nerves. Wait a minute. It's my theory that the killer was an amateur. Otherwise, he'd have brought his own weapon along and not relied on finding one in Stanley's room. Who's got the bottle opener? Here you are. What I can't figure out is why he had to kill Stanley to get the money. Oh, that's a cinch. So Stanley couldn't identify him later. Yeah, but he didn't take any money. Yeah. Well, he was scared, that's why. When he heard Ben and John at the door, he got so flustered he couldn't think straight. Maybe it wasn't the money he was after. Maybe he killed Stanley for some other reason. In my opinion... Hey, if the killer was someone Stanley knew... Well, that had almost narrowed down to the college circle. Well, there's nothing like starting off the fall term with a nice, juicy murder. <laughs> Here's how. <laughs> Did you hear? The old miser left his body to the college. He's just the guy to figure out a way to beat his burial expenses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what is it? Larry, my boy, we're just celebrating your good luck. Yeah, it isn't every day that a Druton man gets an article published in the periodical review. And a thousand bucks. Yeah. Hey, here you are, Larry. Have one. It's all yours. Yeah, we uh, charged it to your account at Doc's place. Well, aren't you going to make a speech? You don't want a speech, do you? No! <laughs> Let's drink up, boys. Well, I, I got, got a full one. A cold one. This yeah. is my third bottle. Uh, here you are. Here's a cold one. I wonder if the beer will hold out. Uh, if it doesn't, we can go down to Doc's place and get some more. Who's got any money? We were just discussing the sad demise of Professor Stanley. Well, you got any ideas? I feel the same about Stanley dead as I felt about him alive. Which is? Who cares? The police do. Do they? To them, it's just another job. Now they'll never find out who did it. No, it'll end up another one of those unsolved crimes. I disagree. Now, let's... Sit down, Sherlock. Well, do you want to hear my theory or not? No. Nah. Sure we do. Go ahead, Ben. Well, every criminal makes at least one mistake. Sometimes he leaves his fingerprints or drops something. A cigarette butt or a handkerchief. <laughs> He may get some blood on his clothes or some, some hair under his fingernails. That's all the police need, a little thing like a strand of hair. Yeah, but the police make mistakes, too. Sure they do, but they can afford to. All it means is that they start over again. In my opinion... Suppose the killer doesn't leave anything at the scene of the crime or take anything away. Then what? And he's still not in the clear after that. He's got to be on his guard continually. All the police have to do is sit and wait until he makes one little slip. And he always does. Give me another beer. Sure, Larry. Well, I guess we better call tonight, huh, fellas? Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Had a fine Grab time. Hold yeah, I wish I had out. time to finish my beer. Yeah, Hey, what are we going to do with all this Johnny? beer? Uh, ben? Oh, I'll leave it for Larry. Larry. Okay. Fine. You pay for my time. Right. 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 Only drink two tonight, though. Sure. Go on. Okay, take it easy. Good night. <laughs> good night, John. Good night. Go down the
is it? It's me, the landlady. Just a minute. What do you want now? You got your rent. I thought I'd tidy up the room a little. And I brought you some clean towels. Captain Burke wants to see you. Again? Yeah, again. What for? I didn't ask him. Good morning, Larry. Good morning. Sit down. I'll be with you right away. I've been up all night working on a case. Stand a case? No. Robbery on the west side. <laughs> I hope I'm not taking you away from your study. The fall term doesn't begin for a week. Smoke a pipe? Yes. Try some of that tobacco on the table there. It's a special blend. None of that sweet perfume stuff, just honest to goodness tobacco. Smells good. I suppose you're wondering why I asked you up here. Well, I uh, don't imagine it was to sample your tobacco. <laughs> That's good. You've got a sense of humor, Larry. But you're stuck for an answer, always crack a joke. What makes you think I was stuck for an answer? Oh, come now, don't take it personally. Look, Captain, you sent for me, I'm here. I like your tobacco and I like your conversation, but I got a couple of things to attend to, so come to the point. When you reach my age, Larry, you'll find it's much more fun putting off till tomorrow what you want to do today. That's all very well, Captain. What's the point? Oh, yes. The point. I've been reading an article you wrote, Larry. Oh. In this month's periodical review. How'd you find out it was mine? It was signed with a pen name. It interested me so much I called the editor, he told me. Men above the law. Do you really believe there's some men who should be above the law? I don't write things I don't believe. The accepted theory is that the law should apply equally to everyone. No, it doesn't always work out that way. That's the accepted theory, yes. But not yours. You say here, there are two types of men, ordinary and unusual man, but the unusual man in the law sometimes acts as a senseless barrier. It is then only right for him to violate it in order to attain his goal. That's the way I see it. Then you believe that the end always justifies the means. That's right. But supposing... But in order to attain his goal, your unusual man should have to kill somebody. The goal is important enough. Take Isaac Newton or Louis Pasteur, Thomas Edison. I say that Edison couldn't have made his discoveries about electricity without sacrificing the lives of one, a dozen, or even a hundred people. He would have had the right. In fact, it would have been his duty to eliminate those people so the world would benefit by his discoveries. But as I recall, Thomas Edison and Newton and Pasteur got along quite nicely without eliminating anyone. They were just examples. Well, suppose an ordinary man imagines he's unusual and begins to eliminate people. You have an interesting theory, Larry, but if it were generally accepted, our whole civilization would go to pieces. We'd be back in the Middle Ages. Nobody's above the law. Tell me, Larry... Do you think of yourself just a little as a, an unusual person? We were discussing my article about me. Well, thanks for coming up, Larry. I didn't exactly come up, Captain. Your man Schaefer brought me. Oh, you mustn't mind Schaefer. He can't help an old lady across the street without making it look like an arrest. When do you want to see me again? Anytime, Larry. Drop up anytime. Always glad to see you, my boy. By the way, the night you bonjo watch with Stanley, did you notice a painter decorating an apartment on the second floor? A painter? Yes, a house painter. No, I didn't see any painter. Did you notice the wet paint sign on the door? You're forgetting, Captain. I was there Tuesday night. The painter didn't start working till Wednesday. That's what the newspapers said. No, Captain, I didn't see any sign on any door. Send in the painter. Anything else? Oh, I forgot the sugar. Oh, I never use it. Eileen. Yes? How long have you known Larry Crane? Oh, about a week. When did you first meet him? 
Mm, last Wednesday, I think it was. Right here. I, I couldn't pay my check and he helped me out. Thank you. Come in again. Have you seen much of him since? We drove out to Woodland Park yesterday. Did you notice anything about him? Anything strange? Now, look. Why all the questions? Is something wrong? No, just asking. Hello, Mr. Carter. When you expect to see him again? I don't know. Didn't he ask you for another date? No. Uh, do you remember anything he said yesterday? Yes. He said I fixed the best sandwiches he ever ate. Is that all? No. He said I was very pretty. What else did he say? Why don't you ask him? Working overtime, Mr. Schaefer? No, I'm just here for the kicks. Hello, Eileen. Hello. Just a cup of coffee. You uh, mind if I sit down? Help yourself. Still working on the Stanley case? Yeah. Making any progress? Mm, we've made an arrest. Who? The house painter. You sure you got the right man? We always get the right man. Sooner or later. But the house painter... He must have known he'd be the first to be suspected. Seems so stupid. Murder is a stupid crime. Be seeing you. Larry, you, um, you look sort of pale. Do you, do you feel all right? Fine. What did Shaver want? Did he ask any questions? There he is. Oh, yeah. Hiya, Larry. You've just been given there. Hey, who's telling this? Who I knew it first. There was a meeting with the faculty. And old Jordan came through for you, Larry. They renewed your scholarship. Renewed my scholarship? Why? Well, your article, of course. Men above the law. I'll better scare the dean still. I think I'll write that article. Murder in six going less. That'll be a killer. You're on the way to the movies, Larry. How about coming along? No. Yeah, come on, you guys. All right, let's go. Come on, Larry. Come on, Larry. Eileen. Are you uh, through for the night? Uh-huh. Are you coming with me? If you want me to. they've renewed your scholarship. It's only one more year and you'll be a doctor. Um, uh, let's sit down here. Must be a wonderful feeling, knowing that people will trust themselves in your hands, that, that they'll depend on you to make them well again. Larry, what's wrong? Wrong? You're in some kind of trouble. What makes you say that? Schaefer was asking about you. Why'd you tell him? Nothing. You don't have to cover up for me. I have nothing to hide. Haven't you? What if I have? I want to help you, Larry. Why? Because you helped me once. But... But that isn't the only reason. How can you help me, Eileen? Sometimes just talking about a thing helps. It isn't always easy to put things in the words. You know, I've been living alone in one room for three years now. It's a small room with a low ceiling. Sometimes I feel as though the walls were... Where did you spring from? Stop playing games, Schaefer. You've been following me. 
following you. Why should I follow you? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Where's Captain Burke? What's it to you? I asked you a question, Schaefer. He's uh, kind of busy tonight. You'll see me. Oh, Eileen, you better go on home. Yeah. <clears throat> What are you taking me here for? You wanted to see Burke, didn't you? Yes, but I... Come on. Captain Burke, I want to know why Schaefer keeps following me. Why should he follow you, Larry? Now, you're putting on the same act as your pet bloodhound. Why don't you make him admit he's been hounding me? For all I know, he was following me. That's a lie. I tell you, it... Can't you stop fooling around for a minute? I'm not exactly fooling around, Larry. I'm trying to reconstruct the murder. I won't need you, Schaefer. Okay. I think I know how it happened. You do? The way I see it, Stanley had no suspicion. He was bent over the table examining something. The killer was standing right there. Grab hold of that poker, Larry. No, not that one, the heavy one. Don't worry, we've already checked it for fingerprints. Now, I'm Stanley and you're the murderer. You cross the room, closing slowly in on me. You're right behind me now. I still suspect nothing. You raise the poker. A bottle of wine. Standing here. And now with the poker over my head, you hesitate. Then you pull yourself together and bring it down with all your strength. <laughs> We found Stanley's body right there. Well, Larry, what do you think? It's a very interesting theory. Let's go down to headquarters. I'll show you some interesting facts. These are enlarged negatives of the evidence we've gathered in the Stanley case. Do you want to take a look? This is one of the fingerprints we found on the strong box in Stanley's room. The strong box? But I thought... You thought what? According to the newspapers, no fingerprints were found. You read the newspapers very carefully, don't you? Uh, what if I do? Oh, nothing. Have you any idea who left those prints on the strong box? How should I know? Think, Larry. Who? Why, Stanley, of course. Who else? Now, here is something interesting. These are fibers from a man's coat. They were found the day after the murder, clinging to the wet paint on the door of the apartment below Stanley's. The man had probably hidden there sometime during the night and inadvertently leaned against the wet paint. You'd be surprised at the number of things we've been able to find out from these few fibers. For instance, we know that the coat from which they came was a brown tweed with an interlocking red stripe had been worn for several years and was probably out at the elbows and frayed at the cuffs. Why are you telling me all this? Oh, I thought it might interest you. Why should it? Larry, the first time you came down to see me, you were wearing a rather strange outfit. The coat and trousers didn't match. It was all I had. As I remember, the coat was a light gray worsted double-breasted with the second button missing from the left sleeve, correct? Go on. And the trousers a bit faded in a need of pressing. They were a brown tweed, weren't they, Larry? You think you're very clever, don't you? What do you mean? 
You want to trick me into denying I had a brown tweed suit? Well, I did have a brown tweed suit. I'm admitting it. Well, you've got me all wrong, Larry. I just thought you might be interested in these fibers because they came from a suit similar to yours. I didn't say they came from your suit. Stop playing cat and mouse. I won't stand it anymore, do you hear? I won't. I won't, I won't! Please, Larry, you'll disturb them in the next room. I don't care who I disturb. They're busy in there, dissecting Professor Stanley's remains. Dissecting Stanley's remains? Yes, perhaps you'd like to watch. Come along and take your mind off yourself. You're a medical student. You've seen bodies carved up before. Leave me alone. Leave me alone!
is it? Me. Larry. Larry? It's almost one o'clock. I have to see you, Eileen. All right, just a minute. Coffee. Why don't you take your coat off, Larry? Try and relax for a minute. Relax? How can I relax? What is it, Larry? Won't you tell me what's troubling you? It's about Professor Stanley. Well, what about him? I know who killed him. Have they caught the man? No, they haven't caught him yet. Then how did you find out? Yes. Was it one of the students? Yes. Do I know him? Yes. Who? Take a good look. I'll go now. What made you do it? I needed money. But you didn't take any money. check came the next day. If only you'd waited. You get tired of waiting? One more day and everything would have been different. Too late now. What'll I do? Barry, you can't go on carrying a secret like that. I'll see Captain Burke in the morning. Beautiful morning, isn't it? That storm last night was just what we needed to clear the air. How did you know I wanted to see you? Did you? I was just passing by on my way to the office and thought I'd drop in. Your door was open. You're making it very convenient for me, Captain. <laughs> Why doesn't he try some other tune? Larry, I've come to have it out with you. I'm sorry I had to treat you the way I did last night. But you understand it's all part of the game. I understand. I've caused you a great deal of suffering. Believe me, I know what it's like for a sensitive man to go through such treatment, and I'm sorry. I really am. You see, Larry, from the first, there were only two suspects. The painter and you. For quite a while, we were at a dead end. We couldn't make head or tail of the whole situation. Then, finally, when all the clues were at hand, we realized there could only be one answer. But that's the way those things all pan out. Nine o'clock. Have to be going. You want me to come along? No. If you want to talk, I'll be in my office at 2.30.
I'll be expecting you. Mr. Crane? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm leaving. Will you be gone for long? Oh, good. But you're paid up to the end of the week. Never mind. I want you to pack my books. I'll, uh, I'll send for them later. Is there something wrong? Wrong? No. Uh, everything's just fine. Taking a trip, Mr. Crane? A trip? Yes, I, uh, I need a change of air. I... Be going long? Well, there's nothing to keep me here now, is there? You got the right man. You think so? He confessed, didn't he? I've seen a lot of guys confess to things they never did. Well, why should he? If you ask me, that trainer's nutty as a fruitcake. Well, I have to be running along. There's someone waiting for me. Eileen? Yes. Go ahead. Professor Stanley, may I come in? Oh, sure. Sure. I imagine you're surprised to see me. Surprised? I'm... I'm delighted. Oh, come and sit down. I've been thinking over our conversation of last night, Mr. Crane, and it occurred to me that you must be in a rather tight financial situation. Now that's putting it mildly. As you know, I've always believed education must be encouraged. So I thought you might appreciate a small loan. Well, thanks, but I... Sign right there. A hundred and fifty dollars. Thanks, Professor Stanley. This is Swellerville. Thanks a lot. I think nothing of it. Oh, uh, just a minute. How am I going to pay you back? I, I won't be here for the fall term. Oh, I forgot to tell you. You've just been awarded the $1,500 Memorial Scholarship. Goodbye. A hundred and twenty. You've got the best room in the house. 
That'll be a week's rent in advance. Oh. No cooking, no washing. And remember, no visitors after 10. Oh, you live here too. How'd you know where to find me? I owe you something, don't I? Here. 25, 50, 60 cents. 60 cents? But... That's exactly what you loaned me. Don't go, Eileen. Eileen. My name's Kathy. Oh. Kathy, uh... Would you, uh... What are you doing tonight? Well... I hardly know you. I feel as though I'd known you a long time. I don't remember meeting you before Doc's place. Larry's my name. It's, uh... Funny how people sometimes think they know each other. I guess funnier things than that can happen. I don't suppose you could make it tonight. I might. Oh, uh, Kathy. Would you mind if I called you Eileen? You sure were in love with that girl, weren't you? Someday I'll tell you all about it.